So what's it like to have a small solar system? Well, I'll show you. The first thing I do is I turn this here light off. I think it's a 25 watt watt light on my back porch. You know, it's all about the preservation of power, you know? Next, I come over here and kind of check out what's going on with the sun. Hopefully that's not blinding you. It's a sunny day, so I have to decide whether I'm going to put this panel out, which is on my smaller bolt ends, which I think I'm going to just put right here. And then I'll put this one right here. And another thing I typically do is I put, I put that one on my makeshift tilter. So these two panels are connected to my portable power station that can take in 80 watts. This one, this 50 watt panel is connected to my one that can take 45 watts. So that's my morning jam. It is a sunny day outside, so that means I immediately come over here and turn stuff on. Oh, you can see a little perk that's charging, but it's not showing the solar sim symbol. So I just unplug that and then plug it back in. Now you can see the solar system symbol is back. I turn on this AC. Mainly because the sun is generating power, I want to use that power. Now, you can see both of my power stations are relatively full. That's another reason why I just get to using the power. <laughs> because it's not like I need to build them up. If maybe this one was like lower power, I wouldn't put any load on it. Same thing for this one. If it was lower power, I wouldn't put any load on it. But because they're full, we about to start looking around frantically for stuff to charge. Cause I, I, I gotta use the power, man. I, I love it. So let's charge some stuff. First two candidates of my son's cell phones. These dips have crazy big batteries. This one's at 75. I try to keep phones between 40 and 80%, but these phones were budget phones, super cheap, so. We just hammer them and the battery life is crazy. So let's get that charging. So the Bowden's first power port supports quick charge for these devices. Contrast to this one, which has quick charge, but it doesn't support the quick charge for these. It does, however, <laughs> support quick charge for this Galaxy S7. So uh, I don't, you know, Samsung is weird, I, I suppose. We put the 43% one on the quick charge, put the normal one on the regular charge. So this one's gonna get 10 watts. The quick charge is gonna give it 15. My extension cables go over to my desk and this is where all the rest of the messy magic happens. This is this. It was worse than this yesterday too. I actually cleared some stuff off. At this point, if I had any power banks that I used um, throughout the evening or whatever, the night, I would charge those now. These have to be charged using one of these power bricks with USB-C on them because the USB-A, the square one, cannot produce the power draw that these need, which is about 20 watts. So I have to use AC because these portable power stations over here are not newer ones. Neither of them have USB-C power delivery. Now, you know what's interesting? I do have a 5521 barrel plug to USB-C. I wonder if that would charge this. Cause I'm pretty sure these are rated at 12 volts by four amps. So that might work. I think I'll throw that in my testing video that I'm doing today. One quick note about my extension cord. I put my white one on my smaller one and I put the black one, which is my newer extension cable, on my more port powerful portable power station. 300 watts, 150, I think 200 max. I also prefer the sleeker look of black, so that's why the black is the preferable one. It's, it's not a race thing. <laughs> but anyway, back to my phones that need to be charged. I don't know if you know this, but iPhones can fast charge only over USB-C. 
So you have to have a USB-C to lightning cable, which I got off of the marketplace for $10. I don't think the young lady who sold it to me knew what she had. She had it for like a iPad or something weird like that and she couldn't use it. When I picked it up, she saw me like plug it into a power station, a power bank and into my phone. She was like, oh, I didn't know you could use it that way. Juice World. So that configuration is probably using 18 watts plus 10 watts. So about 30 watts. I usually come out here a couple of times just to check the setup to make sure it's producing good sun, which this is fine. But typically on a sunny day in the summer, I would have these panels on their individual portable power stations because they both pull enough power to meet the needs of both of those power stations. But this setup is cool for now. Let's do a quick couple measurements. So I have my wires coming in. This is the branch connector that has the two 100 watt panels on it. And this is the 50 watt panel coming into the Bowdens. So let's do a couple quick readings and turn it on to the amps. Lately, it's been floating at 0.2. So we'll hold that to zero it out. And then we'll clamp here. This is producing five amps, which typically in a sunny day in the summer, I haven't tested it in the winter, one panel can produce about this much when the sun's beaming down. But for you know these, these purposes during the winter, I'm okay with the fact that it's taking two panels to push this much. Because when you come over here, you can see that that little panel is producing 2.4. And that's about how much power that a 100 watt panel produces for this particular power station. So that's why I'm glad I put these into rotation. I have a video talking about me putting a 50 watt back into rotation. My son is trying to be in the video. Say hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> you got five amps at I would assume about 16 volts. So whatever that math is, I'm not going to math right now. And then you got 2.4 amps at I don't know how many volts this one produces. Um, I'm not sure. But I would say let's assume it's like 16 to 18 volts then, you know, that's about 40 some odd watts and that's the max out. So I'm glad that I have these two panels on this one because if some cloud cover comes through, then that's still gonna be getting like an amp or two amps depending on how cloudy it is. And I don't have to keep shifting these cables around. It's just like three panels. This 50 watt is enough to power this one. These 200 watts are more than enough for this one on a sunny day. They're overkill. But once the sun starts going down and once the clouds start coming in, this, my main driver of power, still gets power. So the next part of my day is my actual work day. And I try to power my work day off of solar if I can. Laptop, it's old. <laughs> it's a yoga. 2 Pro. I plug my laptop into the black cable because this thing uses about 40 watts when it's charging. But once it gets fully charged, it goes down to about 20 watts. Actually, so I'll show you what the power rating is on the power station since this one does give me output at least. So that is gonna, dang, geez. It's gonna settle down from that in a little bit. It's not really pulling that much power. It's pulling about 30 watts from the iPhones. And it's probably pulling about 40 watts as its initial kind of startup from the laptop. So you can see it's kind of settling down. Now, another thing is on a good solar day, where I have a lot of sun, I'm up in the 12 volt range on my black Rock Pals portable power station, which can take in about 80 watts. I'll add this monitor to the mix. And I love like newer monitors. This thing uses about 13 watts. It has various levels of brightness you can adjust 
um, to make it use less power, but it typically uses about 15 to 18 watts. It's like, man, that's a 22 inch monitor, I believe. So you compare that, this is like a 24 inch monitor. It uses 50 watts. I used to think that this monitor was a good power usage, but then I realized this TV in here, which is a TCL 4 series, 55 inch, that TV uses 50 watts on its own. It jumps up 20 watts once I start using the Roku on the HDMI port. So I've been, I've been really thinking about trying to just use this TV because it has a built-in Roku. So I might as well throw this on the charger. I've been trying out a new ROM on here. I don't know if you guys know what that means, but <laughs> there's a different version of Android on it. And I'm kind of seeing how long the battery will last. But man, when you have sun, you want to charge stuff because I don't have sun all the time. Sorry about the background noise, but you know, we got the kiddos around here. And speaking of fast charging and how this one doesn't really fast charge these ones over here, but it does this one. Check it out. Charging es rapido. Where we at right now? Laptops charging. Two phones. Another two phones. A tablet. Another two phones. And this one actually needs to be charged too. Now you may be asking yourself, or you may be thinking to yourself like, dude, you have a lot of phones. My response to that is you need to mind your business. How about that? Oh, hi. I do, I do have a lot of phones. But um, I get great deals on them. Great deals. And we're just gonna leave it at that. I, I thought about starting a tech channel and I still will. At this point in the day, uh, this stuff over here is green, green, 197, 100, Bowdens is still full and kicking. This one has increased from 12.1 to 12.3. It's using 32 watts. So at this point, everything that I've searched for is pretty much charged up. There's a couple of things hanging around, like my wife has two phones upstairs that she may need to be charged. At this point, I get to the point where it's like, I'm gonna start using my laptop with the monitor. So, cause I, I, I just want to burn the sun energy. It's like once my <laughs> devices get full, which they are close to, it's like I'm looking for creative ways to use the power and then reduce my draw from my electricity. It's pennies, but they, they're my pennies, you know? So we go from here to here. And then this laptop is going to go up here. It's going to be plugged into this. USB 3 to VGA. It has HDMI on it too, but I use that with my Raspberry Pi, which I never really plug into solar. It only uses about five watts and power fluctuates and that's an operating system that needs to be running. So let's get this together. And there it is. Let's go look at the power usage. So right now we have the laptop, the monitor, and the iPhone, which is probably pulling about 18 watts because it's on that USB-C to lightning port uh, 55 watts so that's probably 20 from my laptop 18 from the monitor and 18 from the iPhone so 20 20 20 60 that's that's about right still chugging away at work dual monitor setup is popping let's go see what the portable power stations are at 12.4, 33 watts being used this one is still full and not really pulling anything. So I gotta put something on that. Now let's see what we're looking at, man. It is a proper sunny day today. I love it. You can see the sun is right there. I'm sorry, I hope I'm not blinding you. Still working out. Angle's getting interesting on this one. So what I usually do is this. So like I said, this one is full. And this one is kind of full and I want to put a load on that one. So what I typically do is I come over here and then I'll take my laptop off of this one. So I split the, uh, I split the load. So this is 20 watts or so, and we can put this 20 watts on this one. I don't put my monitor on the white power station, the white cable, which is the Bodan's power station because that's a modified sine inverter. Um, this one over here, the Rockpile, is a pure sine wave inverter. 
So I don't trust my monitors with that modified sign. The laptop, you know, it got the, whatever this does to even out. And it also has the battery inside to kind of even out the voltage or whatever. So now that that monitor is on this portable power station by itself, you can see it's using 14 watts. So yeah, it's about 13, 14 watts. And my computer's on this one, burning about 18, 17 watts as it settles down once it gets fully charged. So you can see we got a little bit of haze up in the sky and there could certainly be clouds that roll in. That's why I'm not so quick to say, oh, oh, take this 100 watt panel and switch it over to my smaller power station because it'll max it out. It's just like, I don't wanna be in there switching up cables all day. I leave those two, this one right here is fine for that little bodan. So that's why I kinda got this set up. And I may keep it like this even no, who am I kidding? I won't do this during the summer months. <laughs> during the summer months, these two panels are going to be separate and they're going to bang out. Actually, it might be better during the summer because it rains and gets overcast in the summer. So this may be a good setup for summer too. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, this is another thing I do during the day. My wife has taken the kids for a ride, which means she won't be in here watching TV or anything like that. I come over here. And I unplug this Roku because that Roku consistently burns about, I think, 18 watts. I guess like 12 volts times 1.5 amps. So I normally unplug that. <laughs> and I can unplug the Amazon Fire Stick too. That uses 5 volts at 1 amp, so that's 5 watts. So, yeah, I mean, that's about 23 watts that I save, that I'm going to save for this hour. And I know that's, it ain't even nickel and diamond. It's percentages of pennies. But, you know, once you get into solar, you just, you want to save as much money as possible and be as strategic as possible with your power usage. That's another way in which solar saves you money. Not only does it save you money with the usage, but it also kind of changes your mindset about how you use power. I told you that sometimes I come in here and I unplug stuff. Also what I do, I have a long extension cable that I reach from over there up to here. Sometimes when I'm in the mood to watch TV, I'll run a cable so that I can use the power. I may do that, but I'm not in the mood to watch TV. I want to ideally start running our internet off of solar um, because that's a constant draw. And the reason why a constant draw is important is because um, it's a better scenario by which you could save money by using solar. It's like to turn on my TV when I wouldn't normally turn on my TV just to use power, that's not really saving me anything because I wouldn't normally have that power on our home in the first place. But something that's always on and can charge from and can run from solar, that kind of starts to reduce my load that I would normally carry. So this Verizon router uses about Maybe about 12 to 15 watts, but then because it's Fios, it also uses something back here called a terminal or whatever. It's just big blocks that's on my wall outside. That uses about 15 watts. So if I power that from the solar, then that would start to reduce my draw down and then it would essentially be saving me money. The last thing I typically do in a day is I will go outside and move my two panels. I'll move my 50 watt panel down to the ground and then I'll move my 100 watt panel down to the ground, push it up against the wall so that if we have a windy night, then it's not blowing off or something like that, which has never happened, but it's something that I do. A windy day, I'm gonna get these panels down now. <laughs> this one stays here. So another thing that I usually do is I pull this panel over here to take up the last little bit of sun. So I'm going to do that. So it'll get some sun. And this one's just going to have to... I don't feel comfortable leaving this here. So maybe I'll just lay it right here on the ground so it could get some power. I'll just end the video right there. It's I have hollow.